Before we start, a big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I will talk more about that later, but for now, let's get into it. Today we are doing meal prep on a budget, and I'm going to make five portions of two different meals, giving ten in total. So the idea here is that you could prepare these meals on a Sunday night, and then have them for your lunch and dinner from Monday through to Friday. All ingredients for both meals were purchased from Aldi and came to a total of £18.77 with some ingredients left over so that gives an average meal cost of £1.87. I've tried to strike some kind of balance between cost, calories, ease of preparation and flavour. We are starting with a simple and easy chilli con carne which will actually be acting as my dinner but I'm preparing this first so it can simmer whilst I prepare the simpler meal later. The only thing to mention here is that I'm using some spices that I already had in but Aldi do sell a pre-made chilli con carne spice mix for 22 pence. First thing to do is heat a large frying pan and finely chop one and a half onions. These will go into the pan first and be given a good five to ten minutes before you add the beef. So whilst you're waiting for those to cook a bit, you can chop up the bell peppers. Add the beef to the pan and break it up. You want the pan on a decent heat so that the beef starts to go a nice brown colour. Adding a beef oxo cube isn't essential but it is an optional extra that I think is worth doing at this point. If you have dissolvable stock cubes you can just add them a little bit later when all the liquids are in. You can add fresh chopped garlic at this point but the granules are going to be cheaper, easier and will keep on your shelf for longer. Once the beef is nice and brown you can transfer everything out of the frying pan and into a large saucepan on a low heat. Add your chopped tomatoes first and then drain and add the kidney beans. Next add the full tin of baked beans without draining. So baked beans aren't typical but I think the sauce they come in helps add a bit of sweetness and improves the flavour overall. Put the frying pan back on the heat and fry your bell peppers. These don't need to be cooked particularly well because they're going to go in the pan with everything else to simmer anyway. But just fry them enough to give them some colour and then throw them into the saucepan with all the rest. Add a generous squeeze of tomato puree and the spice mix if you have one. If you're adding spices individually, the only one that's absolutely essential is your chilli powder. You do need a good couple of heaped teaspoons of this. Paprika, smoked paprika, oregano, cumin, cayenne, salt and pepper are all less important but I would personally suggest adding some paprika and salt as a minimum. Finally just chop up your chilies and throw them in. So if this wasn't on a budget I would add some chopped celery and a square of dark chocolate at this point but they are by no means common or essential ingredients, I just think they add something. Now put the lid on and leave that on a very low heat for a good 45 minutes as a minimum but the longer the better really. Obviously give that a few stirs occasionally. Next it's just time for the rice. I chose brown rice because it was cheaper but be aware that it does typically take longer to cook than white rice. I'm not going to tell you how to cook rice as I'm sure you can figure that out yourself but the packet will tell you if not. Okay, so next meal, I think I'm just going to take you through it as a date rather than doing like edgy cooking videos. I hope you enjoyed them though. We've got our chilli simmering and our rice cooking for that. Meanwhile, I'm going to do the second meal, which is actually going to be the first meal when I eat it. So it's a little bit more simple. We've got a leftover pepper and a chilli from the last meal that I'm just going to use for the sake of using. For the sake of not wasting stuff, mate, we've got a shitload of green beans. We've got some chicken breast. We've got some couscous and we've actually got some chicken stock which I'm going to use to cook the couscous in just to give it a bit of extra flavour. Anything you can cook in stock, cook in stock. I just think it 
infuses like the flavor better than just doing it in plain ass water. So that's it. The first thing I'm gonna do is throw these chicken breasts into the oven. Let's do that. Instead of cutting these in small pieces, I'm gonna keep them in full breasts. Just to retain at least a little bit of moisture. I'm also going to give them a spray with this just to uh, make some seasoning stick. Obviously you can use oil if you're on a dreamer bulk, but I am not. I'm on an absolute shredder piece. So what shall I use on? Uh, not salt because I don't want to dry them out too much. Bit of pepper, bit of smoked paprika. Fancy a bit of heat. I'm going to go with some cayenne. Actually, we don't need the pepper if we've got cayenne. I hate when you make things too peppery, mate. Background music is uh, rice boiling, by the way. Okay, we're doing a bit of cumin. Uh, we're doing a bit of smoked paprika. What I'm gonna do is actually wrap these up pretty much, just so we can uh, keep some of the moisture inside. Slam them in the oven. Okay, and we can forget about them for a while. Uh, I don't know how long a chicken breast cooks for. Probably just gonna, right, I'm gonna keep it on 200. It's a fan oven, I reckon like, 25 minutes, you don't mm. want to overdo it, man. All right, next up, we are going to make some chicken stock, so I'm gonna dissolve one of these in some water. One of the reasons why I like couscous is because it's super easy to prepare, so all you gotta do really is pour boiling water over it, so let's see. <laughs> all right, in the meantime, while that water is boiling, I'm going to chop the ends off these green beans and chop up the pepper and chili, so you know what chopping looks like. I'll just skip to that. I'm gonna do 400 grams, so it's gonna work out to 80 grams a day, of course, course. Obviously, adjust for yourself, smash, and then we have our stock which has boiled. And then literally set that aside, give it a mix about in a minute, with a fork. Okay, we're gonna fry up some of the veg, let's do it. Okay, so green beans are actually going to go in first because they're going to take the longest. So, I'm going to need to give them a little bit of time. I don't like my peppers too overcooked, so I'm uh, going to throw them in last, just cook them a little bit. Same with the chilli. This pepper, I'm actually going to cut up really fine because I'm going to mix it through the um, good, good. I want to give that a little fluff, just so it doesn't set like fucking concrete, right? Mm. Mm. That's a nice one. What I'm actually going to do with these is throw just a touch of soy on. Now, hopefully you got some on your shelf. I didn't include that in the ingredients, but I just decided it on a whim. Touch of soy, and then I'm going to grab a bowl out. I'm going to just shove them all under there. And let them steam a bit. So that'll just help them cook a bit quicker. I'll throw these in around the outside there. Let go get those cooking. Okay, these green beans are looking naughty, mate. Look at that. So I'm gonna plate up these green beans. Okay, and then I'm going to just whip these around the pan a little bit more. They look fucking perfect. Dump these into the course course. Now, this is an optional extra. Ideally, when you do a course course like that, stop it going dry. You wanna like throw just a small knob of butter. <laughs> knob. Just a small knob of butter in there. However, I'm not sure about butter if I'm just gonna if I'm gonna put it in. It's gonna get hot and then it's gonna get cold again and it might eventually get hot again. I'm just gonna put a drop of olive oil in. Now, as I say, not necessary. It's gonna to add to your calories and obviously to your ingredients list. If, you, if you're buying olive oil, mate, you, you're forking out. But I've already got some, so I'm just gonna put a little drop in. Okay. I'm gonna estimate that at like five to 10 mil. Give that a whiz around, mate. That's done, that's done. Now we just wait for the chicken. So I'm just gonna check the chicken and see if this is done. 
Oh, it looks moist, mate. Get in there. Perfect, lad. All right, I'm gonna plate that up. Bang on. Obviously, if you wanna be super accurate, you can weigh everything cooked weight. Like you're putting the nutrition in when it's raw weight, obviously. But then you can weigh everything cooked weight and divide it by five again so that you have an equal portions. I'm just eyeballing it like, because your averages are gonna work out anyway, so. So, the rice is finally done. Brown rice takes a lot longer than white rice. Make note of that. I think I'm just gonna do a layer of rice on the bottom and then pour the chili over it. So, I'm gonna dish this out with this weird contraption that I've got. I haven't really got an appropriate thing and it's too heavy to lift with one hand because I'm quite weak, because cutting feels, but I'm gonna dish out the main meat of it and then pour the rest of the sauce. One of the great things about chili is that as you keep it longer, it actually gets nicer, obviously within reason until it goes like off and then you die, but you know. It's just constantly infusing, mate. So, I reckon like it's gonna peak about Wednesday. Assuming that it's Sunday today, which is not long. Okay, we all set. I'm actually looking forward to eating these. I'm legit gonna have these as my meals for the next five days. Just tried the chili, it's bang on. So, what I would recommend is keeping one or two in the fridge and then freezing the rest and just pulling them out of the freezer and into the fridge the night before. So then obviously you can reheat them on the day. Obviously, make sure everything's cooked. Don't kill yourself, all that kind of stuff. So, the macros for the chili including the rice, are on the screen now. And the macros for the chicken, green beans and couscous are on the screen now. Total cost per meal on average on the screen now. I think that's it. Is that it? That is actually not it because before we go, I want to talk to you quickly about the sponsors of this video, Squarespace. So, Squarespace asked me to do and paid me for a 30 second ad integration, but I feel like I might run over a little bit because I don't want—I don't just want to read from a script and like sneak an ad in under the radar. A, because I can't really read from scripts because I'll just get super awkward and weird and then I'll just freak everyone out. B, because I've been playing around with the platform for the past week or so. I actually think it's sick and it could genuinely help a lot of people and so I want to do it justice. It certainly could have helped me back in the day when I was quote unquote, designing my first online personal training website, which turned out hideously, mate. So if you didn't know, it's essentially an all-in-one platform for web design, so you can create a website, a blog, an online store, you can use any one of their like roughly one zillion templates and then personalize that to whatever extent you want. On that note, I think I'm actually gonna flip all my own online personal training over to a website that I'm creating over there because it's just way more efficient for me. Currently, if I want something changing on web, on my website, I message my website guy, try and convey what I actually want. He does it, I pay him for his time. It's just not as efficient as if I could just log into Squarespace, click, 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 make shit exactly how I want it, and then bosh, I'm done. So way more efficient there, time and cost wise. And also they have like a support service, so if you have any technical queries and stuff like that, they'll sort you out, mate. One thing I like is being able to add forms, so when people are purchasing, training programs or meal plans or anything like that, I can collect all the information I need on site rather than sending people a client details form, having them fill it out, send it back and get it all in one. And so it means everyone gets their programs or meal plans quicker and it's just a more efficient customer experience, which is ideal, mate. Another thing you can do is pull content from your social media channels. So you can pull your photos or whatever from Instagram. You can embed YouTube videos. Pretty much do whatever you want. So I'm gonna keep you posted on updates with my website and let you know when that's fully live. For now, if you wanna check it out, you can head over to squarespace.com and start a free trial. Or you can go to squarespace.com forward slash Joe Delaney for 10% off your first order when you're ready to like get rolling. All right, I think that's it. Ciao, ciao. Joe Delaney is my hero.